right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. And I've noticed sometimes in the comments when I talk about trying to keep my vlogs short, people are like, oh no, I would totally watch a two hour Grim Green video. Oh no, I would totally watch an hour and a half long Grim Green video. Well, it's time to put your money where your mouth is because I got a lot to talk about today and I have a feeling this is going to run wicked, wicked long. Uh, I have no plans. I'm not even going to look at the time. All I'm going to do is talk about the things that I want to talk about, talk about the things that I need to talk about, and however long it runs is however long it runs. Maybe it'll be an hour. Maybe it'll be an hour and a half. Maybe it'll be an hour and 45 minutes. Tuck in because... I have a feeling this is going to be a long one, but I do have some rough vlog notes and I do have a lot of stuff to talk about. And I meant to say, hey, everybody, Jack Ramhard from jackramhard.com. That came to me via Ryan. He thinks with this particular facial hair feature that I need a, a more pornographic name. And he, he suggested Jack Ramhard. And uh, people have been asking me, well, since November's over, aren't you going to shave off your mustache? Uh, my answer is... Of course not, because it looks so boss. Um, I'll keep it around for a while. It might actually go away at some point, but it's not about that. What it's about is the vlog, and I do have some vlog notes, and we do have a lot of stuff to talk about. There's going to be, as usual, beer, shout-outs, lots of vape gear, lots of non-vape gear that I want to talk about. I might throw a review for a mechanical mod in there as well, but like I said, I got a lot to talk about. First up is beer. And uh, I have a note here. I feel like a news anchor tonight in Bolivia. Uh, there's a long note here, but I'm, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. He. he, he I got some. Jo I got some Josh. I got some beer in the mail. I got some Josh in the mail from beer. I got some beer in the mail from a fella named Josh. He sent me some of his uh, his favorite beers. Uh, kind of, I guess, as a thank you for all the hours of free entertainment and information that you've provided. Um, he uh, recently celebrated his vaping anniversary, or vape anniversary, as we call it here in the community, which I think is fantastic. Uh, he has enclosed the beer that I'm going to be trying tonight. It's called Sweet Baby Jesus, and it's a peanut butter chocolate porter. What? Peanut butter chocolate porter. And I thought, you know, with the holidays coming up and celebrating the birth of Christ, if you're into that, I figured that Sweet Baby Jesus by Duclaw Brewing Company uh, would probably be a solid way to go. So I'm going to jump into this first. I want to see if I can get a uh, du okay. Duclaw. Ooh, there it was. Duclaw Sweet Baby Jesus. It's going to see what the uh, beer advocate has to say about it. Craft be cherished, rules be damned. I love that. Craft be cherished, Rules be damned. Um, so we're going to dive into this. Sweet baby Jesus. Josh, thank you for sending me this. Of course, I'm going to pour this uh, right over my keyboard, as I always do, into a standard tulip-style glass. I'm going to try to get a nice uh, nice foamy head on there that Ruby Roo would be proud of. Hey, that's Ruby. That's pretty fucking good. That's pretty good, sister. Pretty pumped on this. Uh, it's just as black as the surface of night it's all like space without the stars it's kind of like that it's kind of dark mm, i get a lot of peanut butter holy cow that's a lot of peanut butter flavoring it smells uh seriously like peanut butter but this is the uh sweet baby jesus from duclaw brewing company josh here's to you it's wow it's surprisingly um light bodied i was expecting a much heavier body because it is a chocolate porter usually porters have that huge that big body in there um surprisingly light on the body heavy on the flavor a lot of peanut butter i'm a i'm a big fan of peanut butter and i know there's not a lot of you know there's people out there who dislike peanut butter and those people are what we call crazy people because I love peanut butter. Uh, I believe I've said this before on social media, but if left to my own devices, I believe that I could just eat a jar of peanut butter with a spoon uh, in one sitting. Pardon me. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> this is surprisingly good. This is scratching me right where I itch right now. Thank you, Josh, for this sweet baby Jesus peanut butter chocolate porter uh, beer. I am enjoying it. Mm. 
I am enjoying it. Oh, that's just fantastic. Oh, that's just so good. But like I said, we do have some shout outs, some first impressions to do some reviews of vape stuff, non vape stuff. You're going to look at this the whole time and kind of wonder what's happening over here. But we're going to talk about that later on, later on at some point. So um, one thing I do want to talk about, uh, I'm wearing a hat currently that says Vape Boss. And that's not to uh, imply that I'm some sort of vape boss myself. I would, I would never say that about myself. Um, this is an app that's coming out. Okay. It's called the Vape Boss app. So the company that created this have a wildly successful Cigar Boss app, and um, they know what they're doing. They're very, very pro about it. They are part of the community. They are vapers themselves, and they're setting up this app called the Vape Boss app. And it's going to kind of be like a one-stop sort of, you can get all your information. There'll be links to products, to reviews. There'll be a social media aspect to it where you can post pictures and statuses, you can find brick and mortar stores, you can get the information you need, you can, uh, you know, do a lot with this, uh, with this app. And uh, it's coming out soon. They don't have a release date for it yet, but it's going to be called Vape Boss. And I actually just started following them on Instagram. And I'll post a link in the description to their Instagram where if you wish, you can follow the Vape Boss app. But they sent me this pretty sweet hat. Looks pretty good, right? Looks pretty. And uh, yeah, so the Vape Boss app coming out uh, soon. You know, as we get closer to the release of it, obviously somewhere on social media, Facebook or Instagram, um, where you can follow me if you want or, or not. I don't care. Uh, I'll post something about the Vape Boss app coming out. And I hope to, in a future video or future vlog, I have a full like review I guess of the app and just to see how it goes because you know I get skeptical of these vaping apps um, I'm skeptical about a lot of stuff and I I I have faith that these guys know what they're doing I have a feeling you know that they're gonna do it right they're gonna do it well it's gonna be very polished and it's gonna be hopefully hopefully very very useful and I think that's great so shout out to the vape boss app I'll have more information later as that uh, as that actually becomes like a real like a real thing um i do have some shout outs to do obviously as we uh, as we move forward in the vlog mm. mm -hmm. oh that is peanut butter delicious i want to give a shout out to my buddy robbie um i've known robbie now for what is it two years it could be two years i don't know um he's a good guy he brought beer to ecc and uh he let us partake in some of said beer, and it was, oh, delicious. And Robbie is just such a nice, good guy. He was at ECC at the I'm Proof booth. So if you went to the I'm Proof area, uh, they were by Casa and the Vaping Militia, this, that, and the other, then you might have met Robbie, and he's just an all-around really good guy. Well, he posts pictures all the time, and I believe I've shouted him out before, but I want to do it again because he's such a good guy. He's posted pictures before on Instagram about um, his many trips to Disneyland. And I am a Disneyland sort of, uh, you know, super nerd, I guess. I have, I mean, Captain Hook is tattooed on my arm. And, I mean, that is ridiculous. And now that Disney owns Star Wars, what? By the way, did you guys see the trailer? Huh. I can't. I've watched it so many times. And the first time I watched it, I was just sitting there just... It was on the TV. I couldn't, and then when the Millennium Falcon comes by and the John Williams orchestra, and I'm just, ah, like I can't, I can't freaking wait for The Force Awakens. I can't freaking wait. Put me down. One ticket, please, The Force Awakens. It's going to be fantastic. But Robbie, he knows I'm a big Disneyland guy, and he's a big Disneyland guy, and he goes there all the time, and he bought me, he bought me a sticker from Disneyland that says, my other car is a doom buggy. Um, if you're not a Disneyland person, you may not know exactly what this means, but there's a ride at Disneyland called the Haunted Mansion. <laughs> Pardon me, Robin, you've been on the Haunted Mansion. You haven't? What good are you then? And they call the little ride vehicles that you're in, they're little clamshells like this, they call them doom buggies. And so he got me a sticker that I am proudly going to put on my car. My other car is a doom buggy. Robbie... Thank you, thank you so much for that. That was uh, 
that was just top notch. That was a very, very super cool thing to do. Um, I have uh, I have some more shout outs to do. In fact, I'm going to get to my email and I have a whole shout outs folder. And the amount of shout out requests that I get is is silly. And I, I kind of have got into this habit of telling everybody the same thing. It's like, absolutely, I, I want to shout you out. I will do the best I can. The amount of shout outs I get is retarded. Um, I have 31 shout outs right now just waiting, just waiting to uh, <laughs> waiting to go on. It's, in fact, I can delete a couple of these that I have already shouted out. And I don't even know if these people watch my videos anymore. But I have a one uh, shout out. Uh, this comes this comes from uh, Ken. Um, he says, I've contacted you in the past for personal help, and I'm reaching out as a proud vapor from Nova Scotia, Canada, where we are currently fighting for our vaping rights. Uh, you are not alone, Mr. Ken in Canada. Our government is quickly trying to pass a law to make selling flavored e-juice illegal. They are concerned with childproof containers, which we are in the community agree with. The bill is Bill 60 in Nova Scotia. A quick Google search will give you all the details, and I'm hoping... You would give us a mention in an upcoming vlog to show support and let the community know that they are not alone in this adventure. And mention if you could, and any mention you could offer would go a long way in lifting our spirits here in Canada. Things are not looking good for us to continue to be able to making better life choices for ourselves. And that's the thing that really upsets me about all of these bills and bans and FDA freaking nonsense. They just... They just won't let us be alone. They just won't let us make this decision to better ourselves. And we know that we're bettering ourselves, bettering ourselves. And thankfully, science is now showing that we are actually bettering ourselves. But the governments, the governments can't, the governments don't like the idea of vice without consequence. And I, I believe I was talking to John from 5280 uh, about vice without consequence. Rancho Cucamonga. Uh, that's an inside joke. Um, I believe I was talking to John from 5280 about vice without consequence and how uh, the powers that be in the government, they don't like that. They think that if you have a vice, there should be consequences to it. And right now we are living in a vice without consequence world. Um, we can vape and, you know, with the exception of things like diacetyl or acetylpropanol in our juices, which we're getting rid of, we basically have vice without consequence. We have the ability to get our nicotine, to not smoke cigarettes, and to live a healthier lifestyle. So Ken, uh, absolutely, obviously we support uh, Canadian Vapors, Nova Scotia, Canada. Hopefully some Canadian Vapors watch this. The bill is called Bill 60, and that's uh, and that's coming out of Canada. Uh, oh, well, I have another shout-out that I want to do, but it's not to an email. Uh, I am going to do one more email-based shout-out because... Uh, because they're, they're, they're just piling up. But I do want to give a shout out to my good friend, Miss Shelley. She works down at Nevada Vapor Supply, and she's just, uh, she's just a wonderful, fantastic person. Um, if you had the chance to meet Shelley at ECC, or if you had the chance to meet Shelley at VaporCon West, she was there. She's just a good person. I, I feel like I'm a better person for just having known her. She's just a great person, and I think... Uh, I think that she absolutely deserves a shout out. She holds down the, the shop, Nevada Vapor Supply, my, my local shop here, and she does a fantastic job, and she's just a wonderful person. So Shelly, here's a fist bump to you. There's a high five. Here's a beer for you. Shelly, 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 super cool, super cool person, wonderful person. So I have one more shout out to do uh, that came to me via email. Uh, he just calls himself Johnson. Johnson! Uh, Nick, first of all, I'd like to thank you for the effort you've done for the industry. Uh, you've been informative and true on your reviews, which by now has helped numerous people quit smoking and started vaping. Thank you very much. Um, with all the email coming your way, I know this email might miss you. So if you happen to read this now, I hope you'll do me a favor and do this shout out for me. The person I would like you to give a shout out to is someone who has been vaping for a long time. As he progresses on his vaping journey, he shares his thoughts and knowledge to countless people. And he always urges the people in the vaping community to help one another. Even though I do not know him personally, but I do hope he will receive a shout out request by me. His name is Nick. 
by the nickname of Grim Green, yes, it's you. <laughs> for all this time you have been doing uh, shout-outs for people, it is time someone should do a shout-out for your channel. <laughs> Uh, I didn't know what I was walking into with this. That is silly. Uh, maybe someone has requested it before, but I hope uh, I'm shouting out myself here. Thank you, Johnson, for the for the very kind words. Um, there's a lot of people on YouTube that are very entertaining, very willing to help, and uh, I'm certainly not unique in my situation. There's a lot of people out there, um, some of which I've become very close friends with, who we all have a, a very similar vision and a very a very similar mentality as far as helping people, getting good information out there. Um, I know that I personally don't 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 make videos to be some sort of uh, vape famous vape superstar. I think that's a bunch of horse shit. Um, but uh, I thank you thank you very much for the kind words. I mean, I wouldn't do it if I didn't love doing it, uh, Johnson. That is ridiculous. Uh, let me let me do one more shout out for Trevor here. Um, guy named Trevor he, uh, emailed me and say, "Hey, buddy, I know you're a busy man. Um, you have been such an inspiration to me in the vaping community. I'll cut this short. Uh, my name is Trevor, and I was wondering if you could possibly do a shout out for my friend Eric. Hmm." who recently got into vaping and he's still smoking sometimes, but the important thing is he is slowing down on that. That is absolutely true. And with your help as well, good sir, if you could shout him out for me, that would mean a lot. Thank you for your time, Trevor. Boom, consider your friend Eric and yourself shouted out. Keep with it, Eric. You know, there's no shame in uh, vaping sometimes and smoking sometimes. Like I've said this before, those my brother was a dual user for for about a solid year, he uh, vaped and smoked and vaped and smoked and cut his cigarettes down and cut his cigarettes down until finally he was like, oh, bomb out of cigarettes. And then he just just kept with the vaping. So, you know, it's a it's a process. It's a it's a it's not a destination. You don't you don't need to reach for that like, oh, I need to quit Ooh, right now. If you need a cigarette, God damn it, just have a cigarette and it'll make your process go that much uh, that much smoother. So thank you. Uh, Thank you so uh, so much. Shout out in the next vlog, just so Trevor knows um, what's going on. So that takes care of some shout outs. So we did some beer and some shout outs so far. We talked about the Vape Boss app. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I believe right now it is time for some first impressions. So in addition to some first impressions today, um, after directly following the first impressions, we're going to do some retro vaping. That's right. We're going to dig into the origin of the word toot. I say it a lot. I have t-shirts that say toot life and people wonder. People, Some people hate it. Some people just downright hate it. There's a lot of Redditors and I will win you over. They hate it when I say toot. I'm going to have a toot. I'm going to rock a toot. Uh... There is a backstory to where this word came from, and I'm going to talk about that. But first, I'm going to get into some first impressions. I've got two rebuildable atomizers and a mech mod that I wanted to do a first impressions for. Pardon me. Oh, I burped. I apologize, Sheik. Sorry. Uh, first up is Dino. Oh, Mr. Dino, co-host of VP Live. He worked with Cisco, who is uh, just one of my absolute heroes. Cisco from Avid Vapor. Um, I'm a big fan of him. I love that man. I love that man. They created a dripper called the Marquee. And this is it right here. It's sitting on my uh, DS1 distortion pedal. This is the Marquee. Kind of unassuming from the outside. Just three holes. There's a sort of a, a drip top sort of situation going in here. Situation. So you can drip your juice in there. Let me just take a, take a toot on this. We'll talk about it. I just want to say that the airflow on this marquee is is flawless, too strong of a word. It is freaking flawless. Dino, Cisco, you knocked it out of the park with the airflow. So the airflow is uh, it's set up. If you've seen uh, an atomizer called the Veritas, it's very much like that. So if I pull this cap off, you're not going to see anything but holes. 
there's two holes right there and you line up those two holes with the two holes here and then if you want to rock a single coil you just put the the center one or one of these on one of the holes and then that you spin it around and there's a deck on here and I'm gonna be that guy right now we're gonna zoom in we're going to zoom the hell in oh look at that oh I can zoom in like this hey that's fancy can you see this deck on here it's designed for vertical coils I'm not sure the lights gonna catch it just right it's bumming me out can you see the deck on here the airflow comes from the back it comes from those two holes right there and goes straight at your coils and I have two vertical coils on there that came to uh, 0.3 ohms just pushing out vapor like crazy I have it wicked that's how I have it wicked this as I'm gonna have to get into this a little bit more when we do a full video because there's a little bit of a learning curve to this particular atomizer in that it comes with these little metal pegs and the metal pegs are sized differently from what did he say two millimeters to 2.5 to three to four millimeters I believe but you wrap your coil on these little pegs okay and you stick the pegs down into the deck where they get like they pop in and then you have this this firm post <laughs> you have a firm post just a firm post where you can move your coil and capture it underneath the screws the first time I built it it was a little bit of a learning curve I'm like ooh, I don't know what I'm doing at all and then the second and third time I built it, it it went much much easier much much smoother and the vape that it provides the airflow is fantastic the flavor is so rich and flavorful it's almost ridiculous the the air chamber is so reduced in here and that slightly tight airflow combined with a reduced chamber it's it's awesome it's great I've been a big fan of this I've also been a big fan of this because I can't seem to get it to leak um, all your juice is stored on the back side of the atomizer and on the front side of your atomizer where these holes are there's there's no juice there's no way for juice to get in there um, unless you dip tip it upside down I don't think it's gonna leak um, I've set it every which way I've set it face down I've set it face up I just happen to vape, vape it right now with these air holes pointing up just because that's the whoops that's the the way oh come on mod okay you're back you're back you're back no what am I doing exit exit okay good 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 lord guitar pedal mod what are you trying to do to me that's just the way that the guitar pedal mod works I hold it in my left hand and the holes are facing up It's such a rich, flavorful, dense vape. Um, really been enjoying the marquee. Obviously, I will follow up later on with how this performs sort of in the in a real world situation. But so far, I've really been enjoying the marquee. If nothing else, God, I just love the airflow. It reminds me of uh, the Tugboat version one, which is one of my favorite airflows of all time. It's a, oh man, it's a hot a warm vape I'm I am having a love affair right now with this atomizer anyway it's good it's good stuff um, the next atomizer that I want to talk about is this it is called the freak show atomizer this came directly from the uh, from the creator and I'm gonna have a link in the description where you can look into this atomizer if you want as well as the marquee atomizer this is the freak show and it's interesting because do you see where the airflow holes are no let me take the top cap off for you the airflow holes and this is great because I have this dim lighting setup and then I have a black friggin atomizer to try to show you where the airflow holes are the airflow holes are down at the bottom do you see that right there that's an airflow hole that's an airflow hole so when you're building on this atomizer there is a deck and there's a juice well on either side but there's also air channels that come up from here and go up right crazy it's crazy it's 
I've had problems with this uh, particular atomizer. I'm rocking it on my my box currently. Vapor for days. Um, I have problems with leaking, um, and that could be just the way that I've built my coils. But if you over drip, it's gonna go down that channel, and it's gonna whoop. It's just gonna scoot right out the bottom there. Um, the airflow is nice. The performance is obviously top notch, but that kind of depends on the build you did on it. I did a dual 26 gauge parallel coil. Uh, I believe this came out to 0.19 ohms. Um, so it's low, but it's on the MyBox, so it's all good. I've been having a couple problems with the MyBox switch, uh, not firing every single time. See, right there, I'm holding it down. Oh, and then it fires, that's weird. The performance is ridiculous. Um, the problem that I run into is it leaks um, if you're not careful and I get juice in my mouth. And I don't know if that's from just like the conical design of the inside of this or if I'm actually way over dripping. I don't feel like I am, but I still have managed to get uh, to get juice in my mouth. See, I had a problem with the switch right there, but not right there. I don't know. Uh, it's an interesting atomizer to say the least, and I'm gonna I'm gonna spend some more time with it. I don't feel comfortable talking about it quite yet. I'm gonna spend some more time with it. And like I said, um, I've been getting juice in my mouth uh, just a little bit. I've been getting a little bit of leaking in there. I end up taking this whole top off. It just kind of wiggles out, and there's like the you know the fins on there for heat sink, and then I just. Oh God, you can't even see inside there. Why do I do this? Why does this happen? Will a flashlight work? Can you see in there? Nope, not even in a little bit. Um, obviously, this will need to be a sort of an up close portion. Um, the juice that I'm vaping, and I realize I run and own and operate a juice company. So it's generally not in my best interest to discuss other juices. And in the past, I've discussed other juices. Uh, I love the RYM from RJ Vapes. Here's to you. I've been vaping this Enjoy Artist Collection. <laughs> this is legit juice, man. Uh, I am surprised. I am surprised and shocked at how good this juice is. Um, this is uh, the Paramour juice. And uh, it's been great. I've tried a couple of the other juices, which I may touch on in a later blog, but surprised. This is legit juice. Enjoy. Uh, yeah, they know what they're doing, and they made some. Uh, they made some really good juice. So yeah, that's the Freak Show Rebuildable Atomizer. Um, obviously, yes, I will report back later plus that just looks cool on the my box that's why i want to use it the my box is green and this is black and the back is black from from the back oh all you see is black it's just like the monolith from 2010 it's so cool sorry 2001 a space odyssey <laughs> i call myself a nerd i don't even know that that's from 2001 it's been great it's been good it's been really good so the last first impression i want to do does anybody remember, anybody remember the Vapor Giant? I think Dimitri already did a video for this, but I won't get to mine for a while, so I figured I'd knock out a first impressions for it. This is the Vapor Giant Mini, which seems like a weird thing to say. It's the Vapor Giant Mini. It's the Vapor Giant version 2 Mini. Um, it comes with, uh, doesn't come with, he sent me a rebuildable atomizer that fits on here. So this is a 23 millimeter mod, I believe. I am going to test that out right now with the marquee because I know the marquee is a 22 millimeter atomizer. So if there's any sort of hangover, yep, I can already see it happening. 23 millimeters, there's a little bit of a lip, little bit of a lip. No big deal. It's not a, you know, it's not the end of the world or anything. But it is a 23 millimeter device. It uses an 18650. It has like a pinky switch style button. And it comes with, or it doesn't come with, mine came with, 
an atomizer, a rebuildable atomizer that kind of reminds me a lot of the Quasar rebuildable atomizer. It has those like Cylon, pardon me, Cylon type holes in it. And this atomizer is 23 millimeters. The threads on this are just, they just spin in. It's pretty fantastical. Oh, that's juicy. Holy cow, that's juicy. Let's get the cop cap back on here. Uh, this is a dual coil 24 gauge. Very simple, very straightforward, very good performer. Very, very, very nice airflow. Uh, don't have any issues with leaking with it so far. Don't have any issues with getting juice in my mouth so far. Um, it does have like this style pinky switch, although I end up rocking it kind of like uh, kind of like this. Quite good, quite powerful. Haven't had any misfires. Um, you adjust it the same way as the Vapor Giant, which means you adjust the top tier atomizer and then you use a screwdriver to adjust the screw in the bottom and that takes up the battery rattle. Um, it's a good, see if I unscrew that, it's a little bit of wobbling, but it's a good system. You can grab a screwdriver and adjust the bottom pin on there, that right there, copper contact against the battery. Um, it's been really cool to use. Um, it's kind of GG styled and I've always, I mean, I've liked the GG mods. I've just never really owned a GG mod. Uh, I had a really old one. It has a locking switch like this, so you can't uh, press it. And then you screw this little nubbiny part down, and boom, you can press it and it fires. It's been pretty fantastic. Um, he sent along some information, a big sort of notebook, as it were, about about all these new products. And there's a new K Fun style tanks that he has. Um, I don't know if the prices are right on this because they seem too low. The Vapor Giant was an expen the original Vapor Giant was an expensive device. And from what I can tell, this atomizer is only $69. $69 for for this atomizer. $69? Now why aren't you working? What did you Oh. Oh. Oh, I messed it up. I messed it up. Wow, I can't, that was weird. Um, yeah, there was some battery rattle going on there. $69 for the atomizer, which, I mean, that seems like a really good deal. And then, that can't be right. I wonder if this is euros. Uh, Vapor Giant Mini. $79. So you get both of them, 69 plus 79. If anybody's good at math, uh, please let me know. 69 plus 79. Anybody get it before me? 150 bucks for the whole thing? 150 bucks for the whole thing? If that's true, if these prices are to be believed, then that, that my friends, is a screaming deal. 150 bucks for a mech mod and a sweet rebuildable atomizer with those Cylon style holes. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I picked out, uh, he sent me a brushed version of it, which we'll probably do a giveaway later on. And he sent me the stainless, the, you know, the chromed out, like sort of shiny stainless steel one. And I picked this one um, because I want to see how the, how it dur how it holds up, how the finish holds up durability wise. Um, but yeah, obviously I will report back later maybe much later maybe even after the first of the year with how the vapor giant mini uh goes but so far it goes well let me have a let me have some beer and then i want to talk about this little guy real fast because i don't know where it came from this atomizer just showed up one day and uh I don't know where it came from and I don't know what it's called. Um, it has this weird top that you unscrew and then there's like a there's like a washer which is a thing uh, and then there's a deck on the inside. Um, I don't know why this washer is there and I don't know why this unscrews like that because it doesn't really accomplish 
anything. I guess that's how you adjust the airflow. There, I think there's an airflow adjustment little kind of thingy underneath there. Um, let, me, let me get this off and show you the deck. The only distinguishing feature on it besides that weird thing is it says love on the bottom. L.O.V.E, number 71. Uh, if you are the creator or sender of this atomizer, please contact me because I'm confused. I don't remember where this came from. Oh, I built some coils on there. It's got a small little deck. It's got a small little juice well in there. I don't know anything. Oh, super reduced chamber. Holy cow, super reduced chamber. Um, I don't know anything about this atomizer. And I wish I did, but I don't. So if anybody has any ideas as to what that is, please, please let me know. So we've covered a lot so far. Beer, shout outs, first impressions. Um, what I would like to do now is retro vaping. All right, so a lot of people, a lot of people out there have been wondering where the word toot comes from. Where does the word toot come from? Where did it start? How did it originate? Uh, why do I say it so much? So if we get back in our vaping time machines, we're going to head back to 2010. We're going to head back to a show called VaporCast. So once upon a time in the world of vaping, there was a show and it was called VaporCast and it was a podcast run by Jack Scott and Adam who I would consider to be uh, dear friends of mine. Uh, maybe more Adam than Scott, but Scott makes me laugh more and I like to hug Jack more if that makes any sense. Um, these guys later opened up the VaporCast store. They later became Nick with this, that, and the other. And they stopped doing the podcast, which is unfortunate because it was a great podcast. And I love listening to those guys. They, Jack, Scott, and Adam, they are the originators of the word toot. And I will post a link in the description to uh, Apple.com where it has all their episodes, uh, you know, uh, going all the way back to the beginning. And if you go back to February 8th, 2010 there's an episode of VaporCast uh, called Pi <laughs> episode 12 is called Pi more grim green more legal mumbo jumbo more juice reviews and more Pi count how many times in that episode the word toot is thrown around um, back in 2009 and 2010 even into 2011 we didn't know what we were doing. We were just making it up as we go along. We're making it up as we go along right now. Believe it or not, there was a time in the vaping world before the term vaping even existed. Nobody called it vaping. Everyone called it e-smoking or digital smoking. It wasn't until a little later that someone coined the term vaping. But for a long time... That wasn't a term. Vaping wasn't a term. Um, so we called taking a toot, taking a toot. And they just invented this word. They said, I'm going to rock a toot right now on this, or I'm going to rock a toot right now on this, that, and the other. They started saying it. They were good friends of mine. So I started saying it. I said, rock a toot. I'm going to have a toot. In fact, I'm going to have a toot right now. And like I said, we're just making it up as we went along. Um, we started calling atomizers Addies. Uh, when the cardamizer came out, nobody knew what to call it. Nobody knew what this was till someone started calling it a cardamizer, and that's how it got its name. Someone on the forums just randomly called it a cardamizer. People were calling them hybrid atomizers or cartridge atomizers. We were just making up this terminology as we went along, kind of like we're doing now with saying like clouds or sub ohming or uh, RDA or RBA. We're just making it up as we go along. And so back then, they just invented the word toot. I, I started saying it, they, they created it, and I adopted it. It's kind, of like, it's kind of like in The Dark Knight Rises when Bane says that he was born in the darkness, but Batman had simply adopted it. In this situation, Vaporcast would be Bane, and I would be, well, I would be Batman, of course, because I just adopted the word toot. And 
every time I say it, I don't say it to be like hip. I certainly don't say it to be cool. I don't say it to be like, hey, this is the thing that's going to catch on. I say it because it reminds me of my roots of vaping, and it reminds me of my good friends Jack Scott and Adam from VaporCast. Back when things were very, very simple and we had a very, very small community, we could say things like toot, and everybody sort of embraced it. In fact, if you go back and maybe listen to the Vape Fest episode, they were at the very first Vape Fest, and if you go back and listen to that episode, don't remember exactly when it was uh february or uh, march 8th 2010 is the first vape fest episode and people that sit down on the show with them people who aren't even around anymore like dumb waldo or dr vapor they say it they say toot that's because it that was a thing that existed back then was toot so i say it i say the, the term toot life isn't you know uh some sort of lifestyle thing it's it's for me to stay in touch with my roots of vaping and not forget where I came from. Toot life isn't a lifestyle, it's not a hip thing. Toot life to me means staying in touch with my roots and the reason that I vape. And it's not to be cool or hip or trendy or anything like that, it's simply to not smoke cigarettes. And that's what toot life means to me. So I have Jack Scott and Adam from VaporCast to thank for the uh, for the term Toot. They invented it. If you dislike it, blame them because they're the ones that uh, they're the ones that invented it. So yeah, now you know. Now you know the 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 history, the sordid history of the word toot and how it came to be a toot lifestyle. At least for me and maybe some other people. I just saw Cheeksy got a toot life shirt and that makes me happy. So. Moving forward, uh, I kind of want to do this. Um, sure, why not? We have plenty of time, right? Everybody wants to sit and watch a two hour long Grim Green video. We're gonna talk about this right here. First, let me show you the review time graphic. All right, so here we are in review time now. We're gonna be talking about a mech mod. Now this is a mech mod, came to me via Oleo Vapes, made by Vapesmith. This is the Knight. It is the Knight with a K, the Knight mech mod. And it is a pretty stellar, stellar little mech mod, especially for the price. This is only 150 bucks, $150, 149 99 this is the tube it's carbon fiber kevlar carbon fiber wrapped around a brass tube so it is conductive there's a switch in the bottom this is silver plated brass silver plated brass let's let's make sure i get my facts right here friends silver plated copper contacts silver plated copper contacts on the bottom a little vape smith logo and i got uh well, I got number 42 because that's what I always look for. So the way that this works is such. <laughs> um, there is a little uh, insulator in there. That's a peak insulator in there. And it's the contact goes through the middle of the peak insulator. And that's what you adjust for your atomizer. So if I plug this Doge atomizer on here, I can kind of put my fingers in there. Boom, oh yes, that is touching the bottom of the atomizer. And then I put this pin in here, and this is again what you use to adjust for battery rattle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, oh you could probably rock this upside down, I think the threads are the same. Uh, yeah, well, cool, so you can have the cross at the top. You want the cross at the top? I want the cross at the top, that's where we're gonna put the cross. So I'm gonna put my battery in here, I'll put my top cap on here, just like that. Oh, I can't believe I nailed it the first time. So there's a little pin in there, which is kind of, like I said, there are standards being adopted in the vape world. And this is one of those standards where you have that top cap with the, the pin that you adjust to take up for battery rattle. I think I nailed it just based on eyesight right there. But uh, yeah, nice little springy switch in the bottom and uh, it vapes, it vapes great. Fantastic. Um, Twisted Messes, you really knocked it out of the park with those coils. Oh, this is top secret juice. You can't see this juice, but I assure you that it is delicious. Very, 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 very delicious. 
So yeah, it's been vaping uh, fantastic. And I believe this to be 23 millimeters around. Yes, it is 23 millimeters around. So if you have a 22 millimeter Addy, there's going to be, oh, just ever so slightly a little lip there, which whatever, you can't even notice. I just think this mod looks cool. Black carbon fiber wrapped around a brass tube. It looks cool. Um, the cross logo on here is actually cut out. It's got like that old medieval cross on there, like a Renaissance era cross. It's cut out. The switch is nice and springy. It does have a locking feature on the bottom so you can lock it, but again, no. Okay, that's weird. Um, we're gonna talk more about this later. <laughs> that's cool too. Um, but the button is flush, so I never find myself using the locking ring. Uh, rarely, if ever, using the locking ring. I just like to hold it, do the Cali Claw and vape. So one of my favorite mech mods that I uh, that I love and I use and I still have out to this day is the Titan by VHO. I just like it, and it's kind of what I use price-wise as a benchmark for a lot of stuff because that mod cost 170 bucks. This mod is 150 bucks. So if you can get something this good as an authentic for 150 bucks, personally, I feel like that's a good deal. Um, and I've been doing this a lot lately, but knowing what I know and having used this mod and having fiddled with it, I would pay 150 bucks for this mod. 150 bucks for an authentic brass, Kevlar, and carbon fiber wrapped mod. The button, it's great. They put a lot into this and it shows. I mean, it's a good, high quality mod. And there's, you know, so many mech mods. In fact, most of the videos that I have coming up, with the exception of maybe the Beast or that other last DNA 30, it's all mech mods. Everybody's making mech mods and everybody's putting out mech mods. This is a good quality mech mod at a very, very reasonable price. And I'll put a link in the description to Oleo Vapes where you can pick up the Night Mod by Vapesmith. I like this setup so much. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it going right now. good it's good it's good it's good getting down to the last of my beer here uh -huh. so the last thing we have to talk about and I believe this will be the last thing we have to talk about um this do you see this fanciness happening right now on my wrist this is called the via buddy <laughs> and it's something completely non-related and I totally totally am going to talk about it comes from our good friend uh, of the community Vapor S. Thompson. This, this is going back in time again, and I don't know why I'm getting so in touch with my roots lately. But VST, Vapor S. Thompson, he was one of those YouTube guys that was around for a while. He opened Nick Fit Nation up in Canada, uh, and now he runs smarthoser.com. And I'll post a link in the description to where you can get this because Christmas is coming up soon. So this is a smart watch. It's a smart watch. The watch is actually smart. Let me make sure that my Bluetooth is connected here. It connects to your phone, uh, Android or iOS uh, phone. Yep, Bluetooth Buddy is connected. It connects automatically, like I did it one time and I never really have to think about it again. But it gives you the time. You can play music from it. Not from it, but you can control your music. You can check your emails. Like if I go to my main screen here and I click on my... This is going to be difficult. Let me make sure my cam is up. I, I apologize that this is so difficultly awkward to show you but you pair this with your phone android and ios it pairs via bluetooth um i can go to my mail um and i can see oh uh okay there's a namber juice order right there and it's gonna load my whole email in here and i can see it and i can go back and go starwood hotels has sent me an email uh discover the sweet life choose uh three and you can scroll through your emails to see them um, you can click on your messages. Uh, I can read a message. Let's go to an old message from Ruby Roo. Uh, Peer Vaping Fury, hashtag redneck pool. Thank you. Thank you for that. Also, there's I have a lot of text messages from Flitz. Did you ever see my vlog on Friday the 13th? I saw Slender Man. <laughs> Love Flitz. Gotta miss you, Flitz. Um, one of the coolest things that you can do is, so let's say you're just listening to music. And you have your little earbuds in and you have a little microphone. 
and your phone's in your back pocket. You get a call, you just go, oh, it, your, your watch literally vibrates and you go, incoming call from this contact and you say, yes, hello. And you can just answer your call without ever touching your phone you, and, and just talk and then you hang it up and then that's it and you, your music starts again. Not only that, you can control your music. So if I turn on uh, Angel Vivaldi here, which is rad, Anyway, that's playing. If I go to my home screen here, this is the music control right here. Someone's calling me. Oh no, I got a text message. Ha! I got a text message. Can I read it? Oh. Okay. Fantastic. Music controls. Pause the music. Play the music. Pause the music. Play the music, and it says a Mercurian Summer Angel Vivaldi right there, and I can skip to the next track if I want. Or pause it. Or play it again. I I think that's uh I think that's kind of amazing. I mean that's kind of freaked me out how cool that was. The ability to have this playing music, so if I just go to songs and, and I shuffle everything, what's gonna be the first thing that comes up? Oh. This is uh, Death Cab for Cutie, Bigsby Canyon Bridge. So let's... Uh, great song. And I'm listening to it. And my phone's locked. And it's over here. And it's in my center console in my car or something like that. And I'm driving. And I want to skip it. And I go, oh, there's my music controls. Next song. Oh, the Death of Optimus Prime from the Transformers soundtrack. Death Cab for Cutie. Again. Queens of the Stone Age. Now I want to listen to this song. And it's good. And I just lock my watch. Like I just press this button and it stays. And no new messages. Okay. And you can set up everything on here. Like if I go to my settings. Well, first let me pause this music. You can go to your settings. Um, you swipe like this. Swipes down to your settings. You can set your brightness level. So let's set this all the way up to the most. Oh, that's bright. Uh, you can have it time out. So 20 seconds and mine times out. You can have it vibrate, your Bluetooth, your main icons, gesture recognition, shows you your firmware, your serial number. It's kind of amazing. It's kind of like this technology that I'm not a watch guy. I've never been a watch guy, but I like the idea of having this on my wrist like you can set it up so you can see your text messages you can set it up so you can see your Twitter feed I don't have it synced to my Twitter feed right now I don't have it synced to my Twitter or my Facebook but you can do that you can set up your location which I don't have it set up for just yet but you scroll through like I can see my calendar right no I can't see my calendar phone calls shows me I have five emails Oh, these are four videos. Nick Green. Oh, Dinner with Sarah? Oh, Dinner with Sandy. That's my mom. So that's on there. I wonder if it'll show me a picture. Nope, won't show me a picture. But it'll show you very basic stuff, and I think it's very, very cool. And like I said, good friend uh, uh, Vapor S. Thompson is selling these on his site. Uh, $199 can get you a Via Buddy smartwatch. There's an app for the iPhone. There's an app for Android. Uh, there's also a desktop application called the Via Buddy tool for updating your own firmware uh, if you so desire. This, that. Oh, no, we're not going to run that right now. This, no. This, that, and the other. Anyway, um, yeah, so Via Buddy, dude, control your music from your, from your watch. You have a screen on your watch. There you go. That's what I got. Am I going to wrap this up now? I think I'm going to wrap this up now. There's a lot of stuff coming. Uh, I don't think that this will be the last video of 2014. I think I'm going to have another double feature and another vlog before we get too close to the holidays. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's what I got for now. There's a lot of stuff coming up. Um, a lot of mech mods. 
the Hyperion Hybrid is going to come up. I know Ruby Roo already did a video for that, but I still want to. Um, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff coming up. There's a lot of changes happening. It's all good. Um, and yeah, that's what I got. That's what I got for today. Um, signing off. <laughs> signing off? I've never said that before. That's what I got for today. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Grab my night. Grab my doge. Grab my twisted messes coils in there. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And as always, let's keep on vaping. Yet. All right. Well, hey, everybody. Okay. I'm going to start it a different way, I think. <laughs> no. No. I didn't check my microphone. Mm.